I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, and this is 545 Live tonight. The governor in town again, and we've got more clips of it. For more on that, I'm going to take the camera and spin it around on my co-captain here, Joe Bushy. Joe. All right, today we went over to Melrose Terrace where we uh, attended a reception honoring Governor Peter Shumlin, who came to support the SASH, Support and Services at Home program, for showing us all how to be Vermont strong. Uh, the governor congratulated all the residents of Melrose Terrace on their tenacity in surviving the damages from Tropical Storm Irene, and he gave them a certificate, which uh, showed his appreciation for that. <laughs> Listen, I just came down to say to all of you, first of all, how proud I am of you. It's been a long haul, a real long haul. And I know that some days you feel like it's two steps forward and one step back. And I got to tell you, it's like that from where Irene hit on the Massachusetts line all the way up to Richmond and Waterbury and everywhere in between. And it was definitely, as you all know, the worst storm in Vermont's history. Some say the second worst, I say the worst. And I'll never forget landing in the chopper with uh, General Doobie a day after the storm in Wyndham County, way up in Bonville. And a woman came out of the chopper and she had in her hand a rain gauge. And she was running after the rain gauge. She said, I love having, I have four or five different rain gauges, she said, but I brought this one for you, Governor, because I wanted you to see it. And I looked at it and 12 and a half inches of water that they picked up in six hours. And we all know that happened all over Wyndham County. So, this I know from being born in Brattleboro and Brattleboro Memorial Hospital and raised in this county, and raised my daughters in this county, and I know I don't need to tell you all this, but I don't care what you say, we didn't used to get storms like that in Vermont when I was a kid. We didn't get 12 inches of rain in a few hours. Since I've been governor for almost a year and a half now, we've had four major weather events. The first was the blizzard of last March, where we got more snow than ever recorded in Vermont's history. People have forgotten about that one. Then we had the floods of April, particularly in central Vermont. People lost their homes, lost their belongings, lost their businesses, lost everything materially that they cared about. Then we had more floods in May, more people lost homes, roads and bridges washed out. Then we had Irene in August. And I was in a plane recently with Governor Douglas, the last governor, and I looked at him and I said, hey, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it true that you were governor for eight years and he ever had one major natural disaster? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, he said yeah, now you mentioned it, now you're right. I said, well, geez, I'm going to, I don't usually go over to Middlebury, but I'm going to go over there and join your church. I need to see you. <laughs> but listen, it's been, a, it's been bad luck, but there's no one who's been more resilient. Uh, been kept on pins and needles longer, and has had more courage than the people of Melrose Terrace. Coming together, uh, getting re, uh, reintroduced for those of you that were able to and those that weren't, uh, trying to sort out what you do in the lives. So I just came down to say to the Federal Housing Authority, to all of you that have worked together to get as far as you have, I'm incredibly proud of you. You are Vermont strong, as Val Stewart just mentioned. You are the example of how to deal with hardship. And I wanted to come down and just say to you, way to go. We're proud of you. We're going to stand with you all the way until we get you back to a place that uh, is as hopefully as happy as where you were. And I don't know if you all know Carolyn Wesley and other Brattleboro kids. She went to daycare right across the street. <laughs> comes from a family that has no interest in public service, <laughs> but uh, we've gotten her introduced, and uh, she's doing a great job working for me up in Montpelier. To get a job in Montpelier right now, since I'm the first governor from Wyndham County in 50 years, you have to come from Wyndham County to apply. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn and I, you know, it's about time, right? They've forgotten yes. about us yes. most of the time. Yes. And I've had a governor who hires me from Wyndham County. Well, Carolyn's a shining example of what we've dug up. So anyway, it's great to be here. I brought with you a governor's certificate of recognition to be presented to the residents of Melrose Terrace. That's to each and every one of you uh, for your resilience and courage in the wake of tropical storm Irene. And so I just wanted you to have this as a token of my appreciation, my pride, and my commitment to continue to stand with you 
as we dig out of this mess. So thank you so much. We're proud of you. And I'll give this to, who should I give this to, Chris? Rhea. 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 I know Rhea. She used to work for me, for God's sake. <laughs> From there, we went over to Brattleboro Memorial Hospital, where Governor Shulman was pleased to announce the, that Vermont, Brattleboro, Vermont, was the first hospital in the nation to install anti-idling kiosks for the rescue vehicles so that they could turn their diesel engines off and climate control fresh air and electricity to the ambulance so that they could keep their medications at the right temperatures and keep their occupants at the right temperatures. great to be back at the hospital where I was born a few years back, and it's great to be home. And uh, I just want to came down to uh, congratulate Broadway Memorial Hospital. In the words of the Vice President of the United States, this is a big deal. It's a big deal because this is the first uh, installation of a Medidoc in America. And it makes sense for a number of reasons. The first is, uh, as we try to contain health care costs, this is going to help Vermont to spend less and deliver quality care in a healthier state. Right now, it's required if rescue, and congratulations to our team from rescue for being here today, you do a great job. Rescue pulls in, they drop you off in the emergency room, they pull over here, and they often spend an hour or two hours inside uh, filling out paperwork and sort of relaying the case that they just brought in. While they're doing that, they have to leave their diesel engines running because there are uh, there are um, medicines, primarily, medicines in the trucks that need to remain at a constant temperature. They have to be heated in the winter and cooled in the summer. What this uh, Medicare system does, or Medidoc system does, is to keep the ambulance or emergency vehicle at a controlled temperature all the time while they're doing that work. That means diesel engine turned off, idling not happen, diesel particles not drifting into the hospital. Now we estimate that idling and bad air, as my friends from the department will tell you, costs Vermont about $30 million a year in our healthcare system. That's for lost work, for illness, for medical costs. Everything that we can do to end idling, to end bad air getting into a place where we're obviously trying to keep people healthy, is a step in the right direction. So my hat is off to the innovation of this project. I think you'll see one of these units at every hospital in the country. I know our friends are here from New Hampshire right now looking it over, wondering how they can catch up with Vermont once again. But uh, we're <laughs> delighted to have them here. To, the, uh, to all the folks who've worked so hard to make this happen, we're proud of you. This is a big deal. It's going to help have us have cleaner air, a healthier population and reduce our health care costs the smart way with technology. So I'm proud of you and delighted to be here.